In this video, I want to walk you through my approach to chest pain, which includes both coronary causes as well as non-coronary causes. For more educational resources like our h &P notebooks, check out medicalbasics.com. So in this video, we're going to be walking through this very uh, general approach to chest pain, um, and I'll kind of walk you through each step one by one. So the first thing is actually chest pain. So it's kind of broken down into two components. One is um, into coronary, and that's typically what we think of when we talk about ACS, and as well as non-coronary syndrome as well. And so I think non-coronary, the way I like to think about it is I kind of break it down into deadly as well as benign causes. And so when it comes to deadly causes, I kind of think... Um, of things that obviously could kill you um, in, a, in a more acute setting. And also kind of the way I, I think about them is more of anatomically, when we start closest to the heart and we work our way out of the heart. So closest to the heart, we kind of think of uh, besides coronary syndrome, which is going to be a whole nother issue, um, closest to the heart of deadly causes, we're going to think of uh, aortic disease. So things like aortic dis dissection, aortic rupture are going to be things that can cause very deadly causes of chest pain. Pneumothorax as well as PE looking more towards the lung are going to be other deadly causes of chest pain. On the other spectrum of things, we start to think more of, rather than things that may kill you acutely, these are more of benign or relatively benign issues, but still things that we need to definitely consider because although in the acute setting, they may not lead to death uh, over the long period of time, they definitely could. And very similarly, what I do to think of this, to make sure that I don't forget anything, I always start inside and I work my way out or, or vice versa. So looking closest to the heart, we start to think about pericarditis as being a, a cause of just like this nagging, nagging chest pain. Esophageal, uh, whether it be esophagitis or esophageal rupture, those are also two other causes. Um, and depending on the cause, could either be benign or more towards the much more acute slash deadly cause. COPD would be another common cause of chest pain. And then thinking more about whether it be muscles or whether it be um, tendons or just inflammation in general, costochondritis and, and any type of uh, musculoskeletal type pain uh, could be other causes of chest pain as well. Malignancy, although a deadly um, is going to be something that isn't necessarily acute, it's, which is what I was going for to, for the deadly. So, but malignancy is definitely something that we want to think about for the long term. Something that can have a more of the uh, progressive type of chest pain that kind of came over a long period of time and progressively getting worse. And then one thing that you cannot ever forget is going to be skin. So, what are some common things that can cause the skin? Is well, your first step in your physical exam is inspection. So, whenever someone complaining of chest pain, the last thing you want to do is report all of your findings, do this very intensive workup, and then forget that this person had a herpes zoster or shingles. This is something that is, can definitely happen that you don't, don't want to overlook, and it's definitely the first thing on your physical exam. So, so something that is, is definitely important that oftentimes can be overlooked. The next thing is going to be um, coronary ACS. And ACS stands for acute coronary syndrome. So it kind of makes sense of why all of these causes are going to be due to some type of um, disease of the coronary arteries uh, that supply the heart. So the first one is going to be unstable angina. And the way that this kind of generally works is that you have some type of buildup and it's going to be unstable angina versus stable angina essentially is you're going to have this pain that either in stable angina is going to be on exertion or unstable angina is going to uh, come regardless of exertion or without exertion. And so what I like to think about this is kind of based off of their lab findings. So unstable angina. EKG as well as troponin. Um, EKG will be, it could be positive. It also could be negative. A troponin is going to be negative in this scenario. Now we can kind of go to the next spectrum of things, which is going to be NSTEMI. And this one, same thing. Plus or minus the EKG findings. Um, remember, NSTEMI is non-ST elevation MI. Uh, but you're going to have a positive troponin. And then finally, when we think of ACS, we're going to think of a STEMI, which is going to have positive EKG findings as well as a positive troponin. 
And so this is kind of the spectrum that I like to think about it, just to kind of have a general framework for thinking about chest pain in this way. Break it down into some type of non-coronary causes as well as coronary causes. I think that everybody kind of has a pretty good command of coronary uh, causes of chest pain. That's the first thing you, everybody remembers. It's going to be an MI. That's the first thing that everybody is always going to say as the cause, but you can never forget about these as well. And I think the easiest way is really what are the can't miss which are the deadly ones and what are the things that we have to kind of go through our checklist to never forget. Be sure to check out our website, medicalbasics.com for more educational resources like our medical ID cards and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more tips and lessons.